Ja, guten Abend, DJ Diplomatische, wie scheißen Sie? What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? What's up? Hey, Peter, what's up to you too? Oh my goodness. Welcome to another episode of What the Hacks, the most viewed, uh, no, the episode last week with the most views and most likes. In the past two weeks on the Discord Syndicate Network. Thank you so much for all the love and the support out there. Tom Gillespie, we were killing it. And, and remember, today, if you, you want to get involved, wait, 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 hold on a second. If you want to support Tom Gillespie on the on the, the heels of last show, if you really yeah. want to support what he's doing, uh, go take a look at his website, the bitjoinery.com. Uh, and go ahead and grab one of those tokens so you can be a contributor and sharpen your your comedy chops by contributing to what he's doing um it's free to do and could be good for your health and according to peter he guarantees that it will extend your life expectancy back to you dj cryptomatic yes so this five, is episode five, three five, with, five uh, years. with yeah. papa boner myself dj cryptomatic and our special <laughs> suspect <laughs> peter is on the show I'm today. The, I'm the usual. I'm the usual guest. You're the usual suspect guest. Let me say hi to the chat down. real quick. DJ Nonom, who was first today, Hex and SB, SE from the UK, I guess. Hex on air is in the house. Kelt Hex is there. DJ Dougie is here. JFK six 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 from down under. Dorsey is our serial complainer. He is here. We got <laughs> Orion. <laughs> Hex on the fact. Man, Hexy Quinn, the whole the whole fam is here. That's nice. The, the Bobs has, has have arrived. Oh, there are yeah. Bobs in this show, by the way. Hey, hi guys. It's the Bobs are Hello here. everyone. <laughs> Where Bobs? Bobs are here. I'm not as smart as Bob. So we can go on like this for, for an hour. <laughs> you have so many. Yeah. Or or just recycle all of those. I'm recycling some good jokes. No, so last week was really a, really a, a slammer episode. It was so much fun with Tom Gillespie, and, and he played played along, which was very cool. Yeah, check out his his doco, as they say in the uh, motion picture scene, the doco production. <laughs> And um, you can find it on the BitJoinery if you Google for that. Or you go to thepulsetube.com. On the right-hand side is a link which leads you directly to the documentary. You can pay with it in crypto as well. You can, If you do that, you get an NFT. Papa B, you tried out the NFT thing, right? 
I tried out the NFT thing uh, simply by uh, claiming the free one at first, uh. right? Free one at first, which is for being an author. A uh, it looks like it's a it's it's a W, but it's an it's an H. It's a hyper. I I confused it with wiper. I thought maybe there was something for me to wipe, but instead it was hyping, hyping the project or the collective, as Tom Gillespie says. Yes. Uh, and the other one is the joiner. A joiner is somebody that would edit the the hijinks and approve or reject, I assume, uh, the quality of the things that are submitted by the authors. So I said, sign me up for all three, and you're delivered a free NFT to prove your commitment to the uh, to the collective, and offer your creative services. Peter, have you watched it yet? What? <laughs> you mean all, all, all four hours? I yes. Have to win Bob fight all four hours. Yes. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. I did it. I did it sooner than uh, Das Baum. Yeah, that's true. Well, das Baum speaking still of, hasn't. <laughs> speaking of Das Baum, uh, first things first. So, um, whoever saw can I preface this? Can I preface this? Tuesday's episode. Yes, please. Okay, we've taken an oath not to tease or involve Das Baum in any of our reindeer games of of comedy fun yes. love call them whatever uh yes. we've called a truce we will not which was the fun. show before actually that's the, correct the show before the green room we, before so you'll you'll call. note you'll note a new temperature uh chilling it out a little bit where dos yeah. bomb is concerned because I'm some tuning people the frequency yes yeah, some people want to be very serious when they stream for us yeah. we say what the heck what the heck right <laughs> We don't make any X such, what we say. no such <laughs> truce exists on our show. And I'll call this out right away. <laughs> Although prefacing this next complaint with, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say credit where credit is due. Doss Bomb's girlfriend knitted this amazing thing. Like the that old he is fashioned way. Showing with like whatever. I don't know how long it took her, but it is a commitment it fits him like a glove. Well, a fairly sloppy glove, but mm. it fits him, keeps his, his nurries warm. Uh, but I'll tell you this. Uh, I had uh, a problem looking at it straight on. How about you guys? <laughs> yeah. But the, pa Papa B, one, one thing. It took her less time than uh, Richard to give any V3 update. <laughs> That's very that, true. That is that's the new way that we should gauge everything from now on. Everything. How long have you been waiting? Well, less time than Richard to give a V3 update. Wonderfully done. Oh, yeah. So, so everybody, uh, we'll say a couple of things about this. Um, yeah. So it's not made okay. of sheep, 100%. It's also yeah. oil. Yeah, it is polyester type of product. But I, I wanted to sift around the internets and see if we could find... Uh, something equally as hard on the yeah. eyes in sweater form. And I kind of like up... the color. I have to say up top here, but the 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 rest of the scheme is more looking like his car. I think. Yeah. Well, you know what? If he drives around with it in his car, that would be. The <laughs> yeah. Point. Imagine that. <laughs> yes, that would be great. Or if he lays across his car, so the gradient just goes through his his body as well. <laughs> that would be great. But uh, you know what? I I I, I scoured the internets to find. Something did you? equally as atrocious in sweater form. And DJ, can you please advance the slide for the studio audience? Um, we've got this. I'm for thinking example. that this is close. This is close. Uh, this is for something uh, that Richard Hart would buy, I guess. In a... yes. uh, Richard Hart bought this. Yes, it would be worth. <laughs> what well, about you? <laughs> this is just this is just clowning around, so to speak, right? <laughs> Bitcoiners. <laughs> I like the look on the guy's face. He looks a little bit confused, like he may have yeah. been gifted this by a girlfriend <laughs> or someone that thought he liked clowns. Uh, yep. And, and then uh, we have frogs. Frogs, frogs. right? You would would not want to gift this to somebody that dons from France, but otherwise, <laughs> it's a great uh, V. It's it's a V configuration of a sleeveless number featuring, like you said, a a frog. What about these glasses, though? <laughs> Those, I think... It's called fashion. I think it's called serial murderer. 
in Germany, no, 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 no. Serial murder blasts are different. Those are like these are like ch child molester. Right. Well, we don't use that term, but let's just say that we'll just jump right to serial murderer. It could be <laughs> children too. right along. <laughs> this is the box of the show. The this, is, this is this is a very festive number, um, <laughs> featuring a gaping hole and what appears to be a fuzzy pasty. Is is this a? I'm not as smart as Bob. So you have any more questions or are you just going to sit there in, in horror? I mean, the, the, the chat wanted it, so they got it. So you got it. <laughs> be, be careful Jesus. what you wish for. You may get at least half of it. Here's a young <laughs> Jack Levin. There's a Jack Levin. This is, <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is him coming up with the concept of Zen. <laughs> you know, also this happened, but but we're not going to go. What? What's that? What's, What's this? <laughs> what? What now? Unusual activity, perhaps. What? Could this be related to that picture? It, it, I'm. I think they found this picture and then shut off his his Twitter. <laughs> they said exactly exactly. These what carrots happened. are just not what we want but to show on I, I think he, he looks like more like Mark Zuckerberg when he was a human <laughs> before yeah, the hearing yes. bef yeah be before the ro robotization can I please call your attention to the fact that there may or may not be bells that are also tied to these snowmen that yeah that's a bit the... Chinese isn't it it's, well it's a festive sound that you can you can make as you walk up and down the neighborhood the breeze in your carrots, so to speak. Happy Chinese New Year, by the way. Happy end of Chinese New Year. Lunar New Year. Days long. Yeah. Lunar Give the New rabbit. Year. Sure, sure. Yeah. Going ahead, Fatu. Going right ahead. What's this? This this is called this... the Yeti, and it's oh. actually very nice with uh, with bicycle shorts. It's also a, uh, it's not fire retardant nor uh, an insect repellent. So please be careful when taking this one out it's, and rolling it's, around it's, in the yard. It's not fire retardant, yes. It's retardant, <laughs> not, not fire retardant. I think the post chain devs would appreciate it though. Oh, yes. Why? Not and so this much is, this one. <laughs> this is the sneaky snake, it's sneaking around. And that hair, that I, I call this hairstyle the uh, the, the the penis glands. This mm. is uh, the head of the dick uh, is exactly what he asked the barber at Supercuts to to emulate, and he got <laughs> say, it. Say no it's more, fam. <laughs> <laughs> Nine ninety nine. Yep. <laughs> right. And moving finally, right along. And this this number is interesting because. It's either appropriate to wear to, let's say, the museum, or it could double instead of a velociraptor impaling your loved one. It could easily be the alien chest burster as well. Yeah, you could take this to a comic con and and show everybody that you've got the Ridley Scott thing going on. <laughs> and here she is yeah. somehow posing like a kangaroo. I don't know why. And that no, okay. is the, the, is the ta discussion. No, no, no. It's, it's the Velociraptor hands. But there's already a Velociraptor, so she's like double Velociraptor. Double the fun. Double the fun. Double the hands. Ah. So in conclusion, we could say congratulations, but please don't wear those. <laughs> yeah. One more thing. One more thing. Uh, <clears throat> DJ, this, this is like a little bit of a epilogue. DJ Cryptomatic and Peter, uh, it's... <laughs> Go ahead and try this. This is very interesting uh, to watch somebody react like this and and completely, you know, do away with all feedback from loved ones or or co-streamers, uh, acquaintances, family, animal, pets. Uh, tell me, in your words, try to instruct me, Papa. No, your underwear goes inside of your pants inside of your pants not would, on the I would, outside I would, I would never say that to you but please do just for the sake of this of this experiment please please no. do no Papa, go ahead please wear your underwear inside the trunk 
No, what? That reaction is kind of weird to you, isn't it? I didn't take your advice. I acknowledged it. But I said, certainly you must be crazy, right? There's The nah, what reaction to me says, no, I heard you, but you got to go fuck yourself now. <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't you think that that's exactly what 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 go back to the picture of dust bomb we got to discuss this last little point now you notice on the front of this uh there is no hex logo which ties the whole joke of the the yellow to orange to pink gradient together yeah it it's is the, the value back. of this thing right it's so back, it's on the back and when we pointed it out to him what was his reaction Everyone in the chat was going crazy, like, oh, it's on fucking backwards. And his reaction was, nah, what? Yeah. I like it nah, that what? <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he excused himself to turn it back around, and we got to see yes. it. We're like, ah, oh, that's that's very nice. But then before the end of the show, he's like, nope, goes back again to the reverse. It's like Peter spending like 20 grand on a beautiful piece of art and then never showing it to us in his background. He's like, Twenty. he puts it, he puts it behind... Hell? Behind the wall, behind you, you've got like a beautiful art piece, one of the best hexagon-based art pieces like we've ever seen, and you would rather keep it out of Pri me. private. Okay. All right. Cool. Enough about Dust Bomb. Done. Right. Smash the likes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it may be difficult, but it it's good for the algo. <laughs> and as, as Dorsey right. points out. Papa, the depends go on the inside yeah. of your pants. That one I will not argue with. The depends <laughs> or the yeah. deep end. Well, well, it does depend. <laughs> one could also say, keep it in your pants. <laughs> yes. Thank you, JFK. DJ Dougie, is, uh, DJ Dougie is supporting me. His words were, I like it from behind, not from the front. <laughs> he said something like this. Yes, he did. Yes. He did. He did. All right. What else do we get? We uh, we have some jokes. Shall we? Oh, I don't no, like they... jokes. We have to keep this very serious. Oh, no jokes. No, not not the jokes, please. <laughs> Depends how bad jokes? they are. The the worse they are, the better. Okay, we got one here from DJ Nom Nom. Check this out. Oh. After an unsuccessful harvest, why did the farmer decide to try a career in music? Because he had a ton of sick beats. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I have to My say, brain hurts. Um, Crypto Vince would be very proud. <laughs> Wait, I can I can do the impression. Are you ready? Crypto okay. Vince, let me let me get him in here. Crypto Vince. <clears throat> ready? I'm gonna gonna draw from my thespian prowess to invoke uh, uh, Crypto Vince's remark. Ready? Ah, uh, ten out of ten. Uh. <laughs> Spot on, sir. Spot Thank on. You. Spot on. And I think um, Crypto Vince would be proud, though, to see DJ DJ Nom Nom like kind of step up, step into his shoes. Is a big shoes to wear, but uh, I think we should get DJ Nom Nom on the show one day. <laughs> I think so too. Since I, Vince I... stepped away from from streaming a little bit, you know, Nom Nom is there too. Yeah. Fill the gap. Cryptomantic. I, I think one day we should get Hexy Queen on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Just because right. you want to have the fight. Of course. The, I, I'm, I'm, I'm always, always ready. Invited. I'm always ready. But she's very shy. Hexy Queen might I be don't think, I don't think that Hexy Queen is shy. In fact, I would say I think she's ready to come on right now. Yes. I think that you should be sending her a DM of the link to the show and see if she would accept the olive branch, young Peter. Say no more, fam. <laughs> Hexy Quinn, put your top back on and get your microphone ready because Peter is sending you the link. Get get your best top on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> link is on the way. Everybody wants to see it, and so shall it be. Uh, what else, what else send, we got send, in your bag? Now we've got a. We've got a second joke, um, but this one is more... This is from our brother, Finbear. So if you have little kids watching, you might want to cover the ears just for the next... <laughs> cover their seconds. ears, eyes, and mouths. So uh, check this out. The 
the husband quit his job or, or... No, 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 sorry, I was too far in. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so there was this couple who was really set in their ways, like pushing retirement. And uh, the husband quit his job or, or resigned just before his pension. And they decided that they're going to sell their house and move a bit closer to the countryside. Maybe get a smaller place with a nicer yard and stuff. And they, the, the missus found a really nice place that they moved into. And then like a week later, the, the guy says to his wife, like, like you know, the, the shed we had in the old house was a lot nicer. I used to go there for a wank every now and then. And the missus was like, yeah, yeah, I know you like the, you know, <clears throat> I know you liked your wanking in the shed. But what, what, what does that, that have to do with the new house? And the guy says, well, you know, the new shed is really crap for wanking. And the missus is like, dude, that's the fucking greenhouse. <laughs> the Finns are not renowned for their, you know, uh, stand-up comedy sensibilities, but because this is an autobiographical story for Finn Bear, it really landed nicely. Well I, done. I have Finn a Bear. feeling there is some truth to this story. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's like, well, a, a man that will remain nameless and obscured from the story. Maybe me, maybe not. Uh, was wanking one day and then greenhouse. <laughs> Such a shame that he isn't here. Oh, he is actually. He, of course, he's he here. Actually in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Finbear. Thank you for being a part of the show. You see, G gentlemen, as long as we're going around the world with comedy, I did hear a joke I can convey. Oh, that goes from on. my Filipino friend. It's a Filipino right. joke. Would anybody like to hear a Filipino joke? Anybody? Oh. Here we go. Okay, got to do it in a Filipino, just exactly the way that he told it to me. This is from uh, a Hawaiian Filipino gentleman who says, Hey, why did the chicken cross the road e, to go to uh, to go to church? Uh, why did the chicken to go to cross the road to go to church? Why? To talk to God? <laughs> What's Please watch your step. Please watch your step. That's the signal that, that gets Papa to tone down and watch his step. Uh, I heard that <laughs> in constant repetition for two full hours in uh, Nagoya Airport just uh, three weeks ago. And it was uh, was painful in the brain. So when I hear it again, it, it will shock me and get me to play nice. Thank you. Awesome. Now, uh, next order of business... We wanted to have so so I guess Hexicoin is chickening out to the to the as always as always to the dentist. <laughs> uh -oh. Maybe next time. Maybe next and, time. Uh, another guy who chicken out was this person right here. DJ Cryptomatic. Let's go. That's right. Let's go. So oh. um we Let, had... let's go let's go not respond to your messages um yes yeah. what is this about we have to bring this up <clears throat> yes so there was this tweet which caused a bit of a stir in the hex community or the security part of the I'll just stir in my pants community oh, no. so crypto coffee says and we wanted to have him on the show to uh, defend himself or explain well, not defend but explain to us more about his opinion but he didn't show i guess he's on vacation at the moment so that's nah, all right but we he still was gonna... probably drunk when right <laughs> when he tweeted this <laughs> so uh 
we can't talk with him, but we can talk about it without him. That's behind <laughs> hey. his back, I guess. So uh, he's saying hardware wallets, yeah. hardware wallets add complexity and extra new risks. The security trade-off <laughs> isn't better. It's just different. If you're not a technical person, don't feel like you need one. Protect your seats. Use isolated device. Follow general security best practices. And all I got to yeah. say is, what the heck? What yeah, the wh heck? Wh why would you buy a hardware wallet when you can buy a separate device for <laughs> a zillion do billion dollars? <laughs> Let me explain why, something to y'all. <laughs> Every everyone. Why spend ninety dollars when when you can spend more? Easy or less, by the way, as well. Less. You know, I, okay. So I want to take you guys back to down guys memory is... lane, back before the the AA opened up for hacks. Back in the early days, I locked horns with an older gentleman. I know it's hard for you to believe, but even older than me. And this guy's name, his call sign was Old Man Hex. And I haven't seen this guy in our community since that time. But he and I locked horns when I said, start this shit right with a hardware wallet. Yes. Do the AA stuff. And if you're going to you know, stake this stuff, I guarantee you, you got to do it for yourself and you got to do it for anybody you onboard. Right. And he came back to <laughs> me. And this is back in the Telegram chat where we're all kind of half trolling Richard at the very beginning. We didn't know what the fuck was going on. We just having a good time. But I stopped and I said, excuse me, but I don't want to be here, you know, in three to five years cleaning up after your fucking mistakes because you think that onboarding is the most important thing, but community retention isn't. Yes. So you can accumulate a whole bunch of people, but not looking out for your, you know, hexagon brothers and sisters by instructing them to get a simple security posture in place. And best practices, by the way, are hardware fucking wallets it's not uh you know a separate device as peter has has definitely pointed out that you just get a oh just go ahead and get yourself a dedicated laptop and make sure that laptop is linux based and make sure that you're encrypting all the everything to, to and from as well and make sure it's never online except for whatever and your updates are scanned and all this other shit you got a honeypot and all these misdirects all through your network and all that's up to date and all that's linux based and all that is freaking by an isp that you know and trust and then you've got all your mail served up by your friend who lives right in your living room fuck all that shit a hardware wallet is the way to go and I think it is, it is entirely um, reckless for a senior hexagon in our community or anyone else to tell you otherwise. Now, I've also prepared this low-tech uh, low analogy. Yeah, thumbs down to that comment. This low-tech analogy, guys. Think of it this way, okay? <laughs> For anybody in our community that says you gotta you gotta go out and you gotta get more people into the this thing of ours, that's the important thing. Not protecting them. Check it out. Here's this beautiful drawing that I that I paid somebody on Fiverr to to make for me. Uh, effectively, here. Thank you. On on and over here, th this little stick man represents you. In in case it wasn't obvious, and your onboards are here in the middle. And let's say that you've onboarded five people because you've gone out there and you've shot your wad into the quitter sphere, the quitter sphere, the Twitter sphere. And you can make people <laughs> the look at <laughs> the look at the hex. And then and then this bad guy, noted by his his evil eye patch, because all all people with eye patches are obviously evil, is yes. it represents an attacker that rinses two of your onboards. Uh, that that's that's pretty much what we're talking about here because uh, this will I happen. Thought it's, I thought listen, it's RG three. God damn listen, it. Yeah, well, <laughs> listen to me. Why are they why are they going to get rinsed? Because they're only using MetaMask. Why are we knowing that they're going to get rinsed? Because this is about the, the the frequency of people that actually contact me via DM and say that they got rinsed. How did they get rinsed? Because there's something called the Mars Stealer, which is an exploit that specifically points toward or is, is an exploit craft of form fitted for uh web extension wallets of which metamask is the most important and most uh you know a famous one all right so how does it work it infects your system you won't ever know about it you just went to a website website injects into your system and you've got this mars dealer all throughout your system oh no what do i do you will never know it because it actually 
goes and it takes the seed store file from your local machine that you've got the MetaMask on and it waits until you type in your password. And guess what? That seed store file is, is encrypted. It's safe, but it's, it's decryptable by use of your password. Not very safe. So if you can collect both of those things and then phone home and have those two bits of information in the, in the, in the bad guy's hands, guess what? You're sharing a wallet with them. And that's how people get rinsed from using MetaMask. You use it as a dumb pipe interface for your hardware wallet to plug into it, Ledger or Trezor. End of fucking story. And here's what it looks like if you do that. The same two, the same two onboards that you just gave up through to the wolves cost you all of this opportunity cost here. All of these freaking onboards and onboards of onboards and onboards of onboards is onboards. All that shit that really grows a community starts from just the two that you fucked over by giving them bad advice. Exactly those two guys. Exactly those two guys. Those they two don't come mar back. marketing guys. Yep. Those two marketing guys is, then would onboard everybody. Yeah. It may be. I mean, if Peter. I can put myself in their shoes real quick, the people who are saying this, and I, I don't mean to call anyone out here, but I'm friends with those guys, so I guess it's okay if I mention their name. Is because I've heard this before from from Crypto Coffee, from Johnny Chaos, and I think from Maddie as well. Um, those three who are very senior guys in our community, and when they say something that holds holds some weight, and they say that. If I'm putting myself in their shoes, it's not my point of view. I think I go along with, oops, my microphone, uh, with Papa B here with the hardware wallets. Because it happened to me. I've been hacked before. And, and uh, having had a hardware wallet at the time um, would have saved me from that. But uh, they say that it adds, like, it makes it too complicated for the layman who comes into the space. It's just another another pain to deal with. And they just want them to, you know, have paper wallets or have a hot wallet on an isolate computer because um, otherwise it would deter them from getting into hacks. That is, I think, their point of view. What can we say against that? Nah. We, say, we say bullshit. <laughs> because, like, because like I say, it's harder, it's harder to get you in. It's like get on the roller coaster ride but I haven't maintained it at all. Yeah. Right. I haven't checked it for safety issues. I don't even know if the seat belts work on it. Right. I don't know if the, the restraint comes down all the way. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I just want more people on my fucking roller coaster. And by the way, people that fly off the roller coaster, it's not it's my problem fault. because I'm fault. not going to, yeah, it's well, no, I'm not going to be at the park because I'm going to be sitting out outside the park saying, Oh, I got my commissions because I got people into the park because I got all this fame and fortune because I got people in the park. Oh, people died? Oh, that's too bad. Unfortunately, hey, rinses and exploits are in the game, so sucks for them. I got mine. Fuck that. Look back at the people that you get into this thing. Take a little bit of responsibility. And by the way, another thing, DJ Cryptomatic and Peter too, I'm sick to death of people quoting the words without knowing what the fuck they're talking about when they say security best practices. What are the web three best practices? Can anybody in the chat right now quote me any one of the guidelines that are set down for web three best practices? I mean, that's I'll, what he wrote here in his tweet, best practices. And the best practice it, is to get a hardware wallet, really. It is, <clears> but it but I'm telling you now that quoting that without having an understanding of the chapters and verses that are available now, which are few and far between mm. is reckless. It's, it's just not fair to the people that you're bringing into this thing. We want yes. people to be secure. We want to be the best and most secure crypto community there is. So I'm telling you what I'm doing about this. Um, you guys can look for it soon. Next Thursday, Guises. you guys, Guises. you guys is uh, John McCoy who runs a security uh, session every Saturday free of charge to people on Twitter spaces to ask any question you want. An incredible asset to our community. He and I are bringing together a, uh, well, the first Hexican and Pulsican community uh, security best practices roundtable, And we're going to delve into all these things. And we're really going to see what 
uh, we're going to put down on paper and publish and establish true best practices in Web3 and specifically in Hex and Pulse. So if you guys want to come and show up and contribute to that, I really urge you to take a look at it. I'll tweet out the particulars as soon as we nail them down. But John McCoy is a very, uh, he's a very experienced uh, uh, security practitioner. And I have a great deal of respect for him. I think that you guys should keep an open ear and take some notes because what he's laying down, it's the God's honest truth. And he does take responsibility for, for what he says, right? Um, also, some pen, uh, penetration testers will be present and some other people in our crypto community from other things like I'm trying to convince <clears throat> through invitation, through connections for the Pulse Police and Hex Security Chat and um, all sorts of people that, that are good security practitioners in our community and need to exchange notes and get on the same page and understand the messaging and the news about exploits because eventually we're all going to be hit by a zero day attack. It's inevitable. The key is, are we able as a community to pivot into the next best thing and seal that gap and apply that patch and make sure our goodies don't get stolen? Because we're on this for 15 years plus together, guys. Yes. And that's and my, it, it, and it guys. can happen and it can happen if, even if you do everything right. Let, let me tell you, this is a bit of storytelling with DJ, uncle DJ, <laughs> but like, this is what happened to me. I got in the space in, uh, or in the spaces, you guys, uh, in, uh, in 2017 at the, at the, at the height of the ICO craze. And I didn't know about hardware wallets back then. I didn't actually know that that it exists and it just became you know the ledger and the treasures just became more popular and i had an ethereum wallet not even with the seed words i just had a public key and a, and a private key and mm. that is the wallet that i had and i used a website called my ether wallet where i could access my wallet by pasting the private key onto the website and then I could make transactions. So this is how I used it. This is, this is more than a hot wallet. This is not even MetaMask. This is, this is totally nuts, right? Wait, DJ Kryptonite, may I interject one thing? The easiest way to get those private keys from you is through the copy paste exploit. So yes. they can either redirect it when you paste it, or they can yep. nab it from you when they copy when you copy it. So please continue. They did a bit of nabbing in that case, but I was using this method for seven months. Like I started in June 2017, and the hack happened in January. So during this time, it was the crazy run up of the first Bitcoin mega cycle. Um, I took part in maybe seven or eight different ICOs. And back then you could only, you know, pay Ethereum towards the ICOs, which is actually quite advanced uh, if you hold your private key. So you should never, you know, um, send to those crowdfunding pages via an exchange. You always must have the wallet where you hold your own keys to. So I did this for six, seven months, always in the same passion, always pasting the bloody key onto the My Ether Wallet website, and nothing ever happened. So I felt totally safe, you know? It was absolutely fine. This works like that. And I made sure I'm not clicking on any fish links in the emails, or I'm always accessing the site by the bookmark that I saved on my computer. So I was careful not to be... Because if you Google something, you you just get an alternative link and the site looks the same, but it's actually a phishing site. So that's not what happened. So then in January 2018, um, I did it again because uh, I don't know what I did. I, I had to transfer something back to the exchange, I believe it was. And then the day later, I checked my wallet again just on the, on the uh, Ethereum Explorer and everything was gone. Everything was rinsed. All my ICO tokens from the six, seven ICOs that I took part, because I was always using the same wallet for everything. And uh, everything, everything got rinsed, got transferred out. There wasn't even any Ethereum in there. They moved Ethereum in to transfer out the ESC20 tokens. It was a market value of $20,000 at the time. Oh. And me beginning <laughs> in this space, 
big money for me. Like this is was serious. I guess it's serious money for for anyone. Big money for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Can can you can you recreate how you broke that to your wife? Peter will play your wife, <laughs> and you can recreate how you broached. And the I'm subject telling with you. Her. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. Telling the wife you fucked up all this money—that's one because there is no transferring back. You know, once it's gone, it's gone. You're you're literally fucked in that in that situation. There's no call center. Hello, Polygon. <laughs> There's nobody in the uh, way in India that you can call. There's just nothing, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah. and then I went like, why? How the hell? could this have happened i was not clicking an email i was using the correct site right. and then again they transferred ethereum in just to move my tokens out and move them to a wallet and i was then able to trace where they send it to and it was sold immediately on ether delta which was uh, the first um uh, dex first that, that dex. Had, yeah, yeah. a kind of dex that we had at the time and then i found out three months later that during the time where this happened, it was actually a window of, of 10 days, the My Ether Wallet website was DNS hacked uh, oh, by hackers. Yeah. So yep. on the back end of the site, on the server uh, level, which nobody using it could have ever noticed or seen or know. And this allowed them for a period of 10 days to anybody who accessed their wallet like I did, um, to paste a copy basically of that private key. And that's how, like they could connect the private key to a certain wallet in that manner. And that's how they, uh, how they took all my shit. And if I ha would have had a hardware wallet at that time, this would have never happened because the hardware wallet never exposes your, your private keys to the internet. It always guards yep. it on that. So even if you are, super careful and as as crypto coffee here mentions um you know isolated device etc if you want to transfer and move coins around you have to connect at some point to the internet yeah. and if then something like this happened what what happened to me you would you don't even know so you can't follow all the best practices that you want they would have taken your your stuff and i feel hardware wallet is the only is the the only thing that really works uh, against that now one, one one thing hold on first of all can we see hex mckenzie's uh uh comment first can we bring that up hex this one McKenzie. yes please okay the question Bob. is uh, how do you recommend we use the hidden wallet on trezor we copy paste the passphrase or type it directly for a trezor one you cannot enter it in directly into the device if you have a a Trezor Model T, you can actually type it directly in the device if you're very patient and really believe in your security posture, then that's the best way to do it. Otherwise, next best way is, sorry to say, typing it into the keyboard is your only other strategy to, to actually enter it in on a Trezor One. However, do not copy and paste it ever because like we just said, a very easy exploit to get the best, the easiest key logger to get exactly what the attackers want is a is a copy and paste redirect right or the 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 key logger for copy paste so if, if they can get it from that it's all in one go it's in one package and then they can also replace what you're entering in if you're establishing where you want to send something accidentally you're not checking things out you you hit paste and you send something to the wrong wallet because they've redirected everything on the uh on the copy paste that you've just put in into their wallet address and off it goes never to be seen again. So that's a great question. Get a really strong passphrase, understand that there is a modicum of risk, but the risk is it's, it's difficult to say <clears throat> that it's hundred percent effective, but what we're doing in this game is we're shaving off. Like I say all the time, you're shaving off little, per, little micro percentage points of the risk of actually getting an exploit to take your funds and using a passphrase, but having to actually enter it in the keyboard, I'll allow that because obviously it requires something other than just the Mars Stealer to rip off everything and then connect the two things. So a passphrase may be disjointed for an attacker if they're just sitting back and waiting, they're getting all of your data in there and they find a passphrase. Okay, they may write it down. They don't have your seeds to connect up with the passphrase. So that's that. Um, what if you have a pin instead of a passphrase? Uh, 
Okay. And the treasure is both, right? Is a pin first. And Co correct. Correct. So I, I think race. I'm going to assume that nom nom is, uh, it could be referring to two things. One, yes, the pa the pin is the first thing that you enter in to unlock the device. So it's not a passphrase, period. A passphrase is entered in. It's not stored in memory ever, anywhere. The pin is. The pin is in local memory on the actual device. The passphrase doesn't exist anywhere. It's only when you type it in. It's not held in memory anywhere, not on your machine, not on your yeah. hardware device, nowhere. It's only in your backups in the real world. But as John McCoy uh, said last weekend, there is a way on Trezor um, Model T that you can actually assign a new pass for a, a new pin to access the passphrase wallet as well. It's a separate pin on top of the pin that you already have to get into the device. A secondary pin is required to get into the passphrase enabled hidden wallet, which is fascinating. So there's that. Don't think that your, your login pin into the device to unlock it is any form of security. It's, I think, up to now 15 characters on the Trezor Model T. They've expanded it. It used to be nine, I think, maximum. So now it's 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 a lot more. It could even be more than 15. I don't know, but I'll have to check. But the idea is that can be easily brute force attacked because the law of math the mathematics behind this is you've got, let's say, nine tumblers and only nine possibilities versus, of course, passphrases, which can be up to 50 to 100 characters on the on the ledger, nano S and X and S plus. That is infinitely more difficult to conceivably guess, crack, or hack, or yes. or brute force at all. Almost imp for for the for the things that man can use today, and the time it would take to do it, you could consider that impossible today. Tomorrow, we don't know, but today, it's just not worth anybody's while to spend the money for a for a quantum computer to actually try and guess in all the grains of sand, which are one of which is your unique passphrase plus your seed phrase in the time space continuum. There's no way that they're going to connect up the two. There's just no conceivable way they can do that yeah. by guessing. I mean, the, also the argument that it's it's so complicated. I don't know. I mean, when this happened to me, I immediately went out and ordered uh, my first nano ledger. And I mean, if you want to set up a, a dummy MetaMask on your on your Chrome browser, it's the same process. Like you you have to write down on paper. Don't take screenshots. Don't take photo pictures with your mobile phone. You write down on paper yep. the twelve or twenty four seed words. And and that's your wallet. You don't actually need the private keys to that. You just have your seed phrase and you store them somewhere safe. And if you install the nano ledger, yeah. it's the same thing. It, you you have but to click the clickety click, which Papa doesn't like. I, I yeah. love the ledger because it's yeah. French. And uh, <laughs> it's okay. If you can uh, like it, it's fine. You click but, through the, the same uh, twenty four words plus a pin. Let me let me let me correct you for a second. The yes. pin is the first thing, then it's the 24 words. And the 24 words coincide with their uh, physical representation. The first four characters of each of those words coincides to a number code that affects the number code previous to that number code. So it, 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 it has an influence on the others prior to it. And then the final one does a full uh, inside outside uh, uh, you know, uh, computation of all the codes that came before and then back again. It's the most important one, they say, is the 24th. But to, to, to clarify, you say you don't even need to have your, 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 your key. And the answer is your seed is a representation of your key. Don't forget key. that. And don't think that, you know, you, you can separate the two or, or the two wouldn't ever match up again if you entered in the seeds. The seeds are the, the representation of the private key. It's just that we've evolved to a point where we're actually making use of the BIP39 compliant, the Bit, Bitcoin, was it Bitcoin Improvement uh, Proposal 39, which provided all those words that would then be used to make these, these wallets come alive on, on the blockchain. And right. they use it across all blockchains now. In the, in the thread here, um, it then went a bit back and forth. Like I forgot my passphrase on the treasure once and almost rocked myself. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. Bob, the guy just corrected me. Correct. 
the, the thing that I was looking for, Bob, and thank you, and I expect to see you on that round table, uh, is checksum. The, the 24th word does the final checksum of the, of the others. Thank you, Bob. Another great uh, security-minded gentleman right there. He is. And again, the passphrase, um, that's actually only for the hidden wallet. So for the main wallet, it's just your pin on the on the treasure that you have to yep. remember, right? And um, then yes. what if there is a zero-day exploit that's discovered? What if the company loses all your data? Ledger already has, which is true on the on the marketing database that was hacked. Doesn't mean anything um, in terms of the soundness and the liability of the security of, of the device. Yeah. That doesn't mean it. Not what if thing. you lock yourself out and lose your seat? Um, that's if you lose your seed, hot wallet, yeah, it's the same thing. Peter needs thing to, pee, to lose so he'll or be get right back. stolen. Well, the beauty is you can lose your actual actual device, and um, no, stop. It is not. It, it is not. Ex <laughs> you cannot simply lose your device. Do you know why? Why? If you have your seed words in another location, you can reinstall it on a brand new ledger. You can, but you should be taking care of this device as if it was your seed, even <laughs> though, because it is easy. I, I wouldn't say easy. I would say it is possible, right, for an experienced and sophisticated attacker to crack open the ledger or the treasure, all the SKUs that they produce, and through the use of a chipset reader, they can extract the seeds from that device. If you're going to lose your device, it's probably because it is, it has punked out because you know it's only got a life expectancy of, let's just say, ten years, right? It, yeah. And if you live near the ocean, it's going to probably be less than that. We don't know, but we simply say it'll punk out at some point. There's no moving parts on board, but the 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 connectors can oxidize over time. Let's say that it dies; it doesn't work anymore. You don't. Have a problem with that because you've got your your seeds backed up in the real world and yes you can reintroduce them safely and securely back in the device however if you go walking around like it's your key fob and you lose it one day that is bad because those seeds can be extracted if somebody does find it and in the in the years to come more and more people are going to recognize what a ledger or a treasure looks like and they're going to say oh damn i found this hey i think i know that guy that tinkers in in his garage and to, has a chipset reader and is kind of you know getting wallets that are you know lost or whatever i might as well just go pay him a couple bucks and take all the the goodies that are in that wallet and that can be done so don't yes. be walking around town with this shit keep it in the privacy and security of your own home and secure those hardware wallets because they're only secured by what pins to get into them as you said I mean, I, I stand by the point or as a plea from my, my side or a pledge that if, if you are somebody in the community with a following, with a standing, people listen to you, if you have followers on your Twitter, on your on your YouTube, and Crypto Coffee is the main YouTuber that we have still, um, that's kind of not the message we should be given out, really. And, yeah, that's, uh, that's, the, that's the bottom line. Because I think it's not so complicated to uh to set up a hardware wallet and, and connect that to your metamask you need to have metamask anyway to enter or you should have to interact with hex and do your stakes and it's just one one click away to connect the hardware wallet and then you have to confirm the transaction on the device but yeah i find i found that super easy and again look at my story 20 grand down uh you know down the toilet basically right. um just and if it was, if it was some hacked. stupid thing on the back end that I had no control over. Yeah. Uh, and that actually saves, not saves from myself of clicking stupid links or watching uh, fishy websites on the internet and thus uh, installing malware on my machine. It also protects me from things that are out of my sphere to. Yeah. But you know what? Uh, again, I just want to nail this home. Think of it as all that, all that energy to go and convince people that this thing of ours is not a scam and that yes. it's not a security and that it's worth your time, that the returns could be potentially, we don't have any financial advice on this show or anywhere else, uh, they could be 
significant. And if they are in this whole crypto thing of yours, no matter what you invest in, be it hex or other things, having that kind of pinning you to a community, it is the ownership of your goodies, period. Because when you don't have it anymore, you got to start over again and you lose, you're not retaining that person in the community. Onboarding is one thing. Growing the community is one thing. But if you're, if you've got a hole in the bucket, you're going to not have the water when it comes time to put out the fire. So please remember that, that uh, community retention should be as equal weight of, of onboarding your onboards or your family, your friends, your, you know, people that trust you, uh, your, your judgment and the story that you have, you don't want them to say, Oh shit, it's over. Right. Yeah. Even before they get to enjoy their first end stake. Absolutely. And we don't mean to shit on crypto coffee. That's, that's not what this is. Like he is the guy, like, especially in those first two months, I remember when after the launch and hex was really down and it was, it was down like now, like 80% or something from, from launch day and crypto coffee was really the only guy who held up the spirits on YouTube and the streaming. And he, you know, made everybody at ease and said, Hey, this is just temporary. You haven't seen nothing yeah. yet. And boy, was he, was he correct? So we owe a lot to, uh, to crypto coffee. It's just, we wanted to give our take on, uh, on this topic basically. Well, I, I'm telling you though that, that, that I think that, introducing Jack Levin to hexagons negated. No. <laughs> Peter <laughs> has to take it there. No, I said something nice. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, I look, I, I'll be the first to say, and, and people know that back in the early days, I was the first one to say that Crypto Coffee is a, a shining star in our community. Yes. He's one of our best Absolutely. and most articulate evangelists. When I heard what he had to say, I'm like, oh, this guy is great, smart back then. Smart kid, right? I, I would say, yeah. but but it, incredible. Um, uh, which is why it's a bit of a heartbreak to see written down that goes to gets 197 likes before I actually you know responded to it. Um, that's influence, right? That's yeah. people that are like, yeah, fuck wearing underwear and wiping my ass. I I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> I, I don't have to because that makes sense to me. 197 likes. You know, it's common sense, but there is no common sense in this thing. If anybody tells you and you trust that thing, then you could make a, a mistake. And then think about how much responsibility that person has coming to you when the shit goes down. And sometimes it's none, right? Sometimes it's and none. this is not some stupid ICO. This is, that has one pump and that's it. This is hex. So, you know, you know where this can years potentially plus, yeah. go. No financial advice. DJ Cryptomatic. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so uh, <laughs> we don't want wrecked. I got wrecked. No, we don't want that. Don't want them. Uh, on a lighter note. Today I'm a list of top five Amter. Number five, Amteran. Number four, Amter Dance. Here's the best one. What? Okay. Numero tres. Amteres cream. <laughs> Numero dos. Amtersus. Whoa, 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 whoa. Honorable mentio. <laughs> Numero uno. Amteres tare. <laughs> Coming soon. So Richard Hart <laughs> put out a bunch of tweets uh, just yesterday. He posted on Telegram first and... Uh, and then also on his Twitter and the latest and greatest about the dev work on the Pulse Chain matcher. Now, I don't understand anything of what this means. Do you guys have 
Here's a hamster. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a hamster. It's an otter. Oh, okay. It's the Aragon Do you guys otter. have any any comments to this? I'm like, what the fuck? But there's screenshots, so you know. Can, it says pulse chain picture. soon is what it says. Look at all that green and white. It's you know so, what? So. Hey, zoom zoom down. Ah, zoom down. Awesome there the, Can you enhance DJ Cryptomatic? I cannot. All right. If you look down the F7 button, if you squint your eyes and go in really, really, really close. You'll see the F7. What does the F7 say? Delete. I don't know. I don't know. No. It says for some reason nice. So if you hit F7 on your keyboard in, un yeah. in unison, it'll be nice. All right. Is that it? I don't care about any of this of Richard's technical jibber jabber. What I noticed was that when he uh posted these updates after long 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 time he posted the, these updates also into hex reddit ah. to hex reddit hex trading hex trading group oh hex trading oh yeah, yeah. and that was ah, unusual I thought it was in Hex News only, but Hex Trading, that's unusual. Hex News. He, po he, post he, he, he Hex posted nudes. it himself into Hex Trading. That's so either way, wow. all we want to know that's is... Like when posting. When the fuck posting. And with that, I think we've... Outro.